So next step, we're going to mask out the, we're going to take the trees, and we're going to mask them out from the background. Like I said, when you're looking for um, images to use in your composition, it helps with your mask to find objects that are very distinct from the background because it just helps the computer know where to mask. So I just zoomed in just a little bit with your little magnifying glass tool. Just zoom in just a little bit just so you can see what you're doing. And then we're going to go back and use my favorite tool again, the quick selection tool. So I'm going to make sure it's set to plus. And I'm actually going to go deep inside these trees right here and I'm just going to click once. And you're going to be like, no, there's lots of trees. But this next step will help you a lot. So if you go to fill, uh, actually select, and you go to and you go to similar, it's going to try to select all the similar like values and uh, and hues. So you see, it get got a little bit of the mountain here and a little bit of the water, but it also got all these little tiny branches, and it didn't get the white background with the mountains and stuff, which is crazy and exactly what you want. So we're going to go back to our, our select and mask tool again, just to refine the edge a little bit more. And look, that's a beautiful selection right there. I'm going to go up. I'm going to turn the opacity all the way up so I can really see what I'm doing. I'm going to turn on smart radius again and turn the radius up just to see if I can get it to feather just a little bit. Soften it just a little bit. And then it Output set to, I'm going to put layer mask. I'm going to hit OK. OK, so the main part of the trees that you want is this little hill of trees right here because it kind of rises out of the coffee cup really nicely and then comes back down into it. Um, so you're going to want to mask out the rest of these guys. If you haven't done layer masking before, um, this might throw you a little bit. But uh, ask for help and practice, and you get better with practice. So layer masking basically is black makes it disappear, white makes it reappear. When you're clicked on this little guy right beside the picture, you see, you see in the layers panel there's the picture, and there's this little black and white icon right here. Um, that is what your mask is showing and not showing. So when you mask something out, you're not actually like deleting it. You're just making it so it doesn't show. This is a safety thing because if you accidentally mask out something that you don't want to show, or that you that you ac you accidentally mask out something that you actually do need to show. Like once I was doing this advanced composition and I accidentally erase the guy's thumb, but I was using a layer mask, and so later on in the composition when I actually noticed that I'd made the guy's thumb disappear, I was able to just bring it back by painting over it with white. Because if you're painting on the layer mask, whatever you paint over with white will appear, and whatever you paint over with black will disappear. So, going along with that concept, we're going to paint over black all these trees over here and the water, because we just want to make the... Um, make the uh, uh, compos make the trees as simple as possible before we bring them into the uh, coffee cup. So I'm just going to grab a brush. I'm going to make sure it's set to black, which you can't see right here. But my color is black right here. And then I'm going to paint over the parts that I want to disappear. And I'm actually going to use, once I get most of this painted out, I'm actually going to use a harder brush because I don't want this softness bleeding over into my little selection. Make sure that's all cleaned up a little bit. There we go. Okay. Now we're going to bring it over into our coffee cup. So the, the trick with this is, actually, I'm, I'll show you the easy way to do it. So right click on it, say duplicate layer, and then destination document set to your coffee. And then hit OK. And then after you hit OK, your tree should be in, in with your coffee mug. 
go next to X. Okay. Okay. So now we're going to move them into the coffee cup. The key with this is to move them like that. Kind of place them where you imagine they should go. And then put them behind the background copy that we made. Just like that. See? Because we we made a co the front of the coffee cup is right here, right? So when we put it behind it, it looks like it's inside the coffee cup. Okay. So now we have to fix this, though, because you see this edge right here? That's not very nice. It looks like the edge of a picture. Because <gasps> it was! Right, Matt? Thank you. <laughs> He's shaking his head, yes. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to work on, and this is going to take some practice because um, it's hard to make it look natural. Thankfully, it'll be covered in mist a little bit, so it won't be too bad. But, oops, I am painting on the wrong mask. Okay, so make sure you clicked on the layer mask, not the actual layer, which is what I did. Okay, make sure you're painting with black. Let's take some of this out. See how it looks like soft and and uh, unnatural? So what I might try doing actually is if I go back to and click on the actual layer thumbnail, I might try seeing if I can get some sort of an edge by... I know, that's not really going to work for me. Control D to deselect. I'm just going to do the best I can and then fix it up once I get my, uh, once I get my, uh, mist in and stuff and see what actually needs fixed. So I'm going to make it smaller. If you do the end bracket on your keyboard, if you tap that, that's the shortcut key to making a brush smaller. And then the, uh, no, actually the start key is the shortcut key for making it smaller and the end bracket key is the key to making it. Bigger. Something like that. We'll just leave it like that for now. Nobody will notice except for you and me. <laughs> mm. Okay. So that's looking okay. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just make a copy of layer one. And then with the copy, I'm going to flip it. Head to edit. Transform, flip horizontally, and then it'll flip. I promise you it flipped. It's just way over here because of the way the mask is. It's over here, but I'm going to bring it in like over here, just about like right here. Except I'm going to put it behind our layer one because I want those trees to be behind it. And bring it up like here. There we go. Well, that's the edge I really like, so I might put it like over here, and then move this guy. The key to moving is clicking on the right layer. I might put this guy over like here. And I might put this guy over here. There we go. I like that. Okay, except these these little bits of ground are sticking out the sides. Which is not something you want. So make sure you clicked on your layer mask and you clicked on your right layer, which I'm clicked on the back one right now. And I'm going to paint over this little bit of grass with some black. Make my brush the right size. There we go. That looks a little brushed, but that looks fine. And then I'm going to do the other tree layer. There we go. That looks good. Okay, now comes the fun part. We get to put in the mist and the other stuff that make it look kind of misty and foggy. Okay, so in your tutorial folder, you'll have some Photoshop brushes. If I haven't showed you guys Photoshop brushes before, you basically just go into the zip folder. It looks like a folder with a zipper on it. You double click on it and then you find what's called the ABR file and it kind of looks like a brush. I can't show you because for some reason I can't record when I'm doing a file viewer. But you just double click on the, br on the brush file, which is the ABR file, 
and then it'll open up Photoshop and your brush should appear in your panel of brushes. So your brushes are over here, these top soft, these top soft guys over here. Not this one. This is your brush presets. This, this one over here. And you see I've already double clicked it. It's right here. It doesn't, with brushes like this, it doesn't give you a super good preview of what it's going to look like. The, my basic method is I just click on it and I make it about the size I want it to be. And then I click. Oops. Okay. So I did something wrong. I was clicked on the layer mask. <laughs> when you're painting with, um, when you're painting something in light fog, you always, 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 always want to do it on a new layer. Because then, if you hate it, you can just delete the new layer and start over again. Otherwise, you have to click undo for a bunch of times, and you might have to start over from way far back. So I'm going to just click once. And that's an interesting fog, but I might put it behind that layer of trees. No, I'm going to put it in front. There we go. I like that. Okay. I'm going to do one more. Number two is like a little billowy on the sides. Want some of that? It's very textured, so I like that. I'm gonna put one more right here. We're not gonna worry about what it's doing around the outsides of the cup because we're just just gonna mask it all out so it looks like it's contained within the cup. Speaking of which, we're gonna do that next. So, with my layer two clicked, this is the layer with my fog on it, right? If I make it disappear, fog all disappears, and I'm going to put I'm gonna put a layer mask on it using down at the bottom of the layers panel there's a box with a circle in it. It kind of looks like a Japanese flag. If you click on that, it'll add a new blank layer mask. So I'm going to paint over it with black where I want the, um, where I don't want the fog to show up. So I'm going to go back. This is a weird brush and I can't really paint with layer, on layer mask with it. Well, I can, but it doesn't turn out very nice. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to get a no nice, soft, round brush. I'm going to make sure my color is black. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller and then I'm going to paint over these edges and make them disappear. I painted a little too much and you saw down in here it took the fog out of the trees. So I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. The key for this one is getting rid of these really harsh edges first because that's where the brush ended and that's what's going to, that's one thing that's going to really tell that your image is fake if you have these like random lines in here. There we go. Make sure all that's masked out. There we go. And that looks pretty good. Okay, then my next my next layer I'm going to put in between the two tree layers. So I'm gonna click on layer one copy. And I'm going to hit new layer so it goes right above the layer one copy which is the back layer of trees. I'm going to go and I'm going to get a different fog brush. That one looks pretty cool. I put it there. See I like the texture of that fog. But see this edge right here? Here let me. See this edge right here? This edge is starting to bother me. So I might move the trees around. Actually, it's the front bit of trees. I move the front trees like a bit lower, so you can kind of see the back ones. I move them out just a little bit. Not that much, like that. There we go. And then I'm gonna mask off this part because that's driving me nuts. Okay, I'm going to get my soft round brush again, make it a lot smaller, I'm going to mask this out, there we go, I'm actually going to make this a little softer too, there we go, that looks better, okay, except we still have this big block of fog, so I'm going to go back to my fog layer, put a mask on it, just like we were doing, and then start painting over this one with my big soft black brush.
There we go. This is starting to look pretty good. Now I'm going to do one more layer of fog behind everything else. Um, if you want to center your photo in your in your workspace, hit Control Zero. That's the shortcut key for that, but most of you know that. So I'm going to click on the background layer because I want our, my new layer to go right on top of the background layer. So I'm going to hit the page with the corner on it to add a new layer. And then I am going to grab my brush, make sure white's my color, and I'm going to go grab another one. See, this one looks really textured, so this one might actually work well. You want, with fog, it tends to be very, um, like you can literally use a big white soft brush to kind of make it look like fog. But real fog is more textured than that. It moves and and there's like bits of it that are thicker and stuff. So you want to kind of capture that with your uh, with your uh, composition. Oh, I already tried that one. I'm just gonna try different ones and hit Control Z when I don't like them. Oh, see that one has a nice texture. But you don't want it to look like clouds either. Although that one's cool. I think it has just a little bit too much texture. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Well, that one's way too thick. That one looks promising, but it doesn't have very much texture. Mm. Yeah, it doesn't have very much texture. I might have to go back to one of the earlier ones, because most of those have pretty good texture. Yeah, I'm going to try the number two again. Oh, by the way, I gave you lots of different fog brushes. You can download fog brushes online. You can download most, like a lot of different brushes on Photoshop. Talia uh, downloaded a ton of brushes. She loves them. <laughs> you download wings. Brushes work best when they're like a single color thing. I like fog or like the moon or um, just anything you can think of that has a single color. Like people don't work very well as brushes because people have lots of colors. <laughs> um, what other things only have one color, Matt? Matthew? You don't want to be in my tutorial? <laughs> that no? <laughs> He's doing sign language. Okay, see, I like that one, except I want it to be a little smaller, so I'm going to make it smaller like that. There we go. See, it kind of looks like clouds now, though. I'm make it a little bigger and only use part of it. I like that. Okay, I like that. Same process. Layer mask on layer four. Make sure you're painting with a black brush. Go get a big white soft brush. It's in the general brushes folder if you kind of lost it up here. Make it small enough so it doesn't erase everything. Make sure you get the harsh lines first. So those are dead giveaways. There we go. I like it. Okay. So the last thing we're going to put in is the moon. I put a waterfall in one of my earlier ones, which I might... Mm, I'll show you guys how to do it, but I don't know if it'll work well with this image. So, moon. So we're going to put another layer on top of the background layer. And then there's only one moon brushes pack that I gave you. So it's easy to choose. I already added it to my Photoshop. I'm going to add... There's lots of different types of moons. It's a full moon. It's like a crescent moon. It's 
kind of cool. I like I like the full moon though. I think it's actually moon one. No, it's moon two. I'm gonna make it the right size. You can make it like big, so it's like that. It looks kind of cool. Just like a little bit smaller. A little bigger. That. It kind of just looks like a bubble. Somebody's blowing air bubbles in your uh, in your coffee cup. I'm gonna make it normal size. I'm gonna kind of because it kind of touches the trees. I put it over here. I like that. Now, if you like it but you want it to be facing a different way, you can always head up here to the little crosshairs move tool. And rotate it. If you hover right outside the corner, it'll give you the rotate option. And you can rotate it like this. Which I kind of like that one. And then make sure you hit the check mark. There you go. Okay, so now I'm going to add the water, but since I'm not sure I'm going to like it, well, it's a good practice anyway, but I'm just going to add a new layer. I probably, I don't know if I like it. So I'm going to go back to my brushes. Make sure you're painting with white. I don't think I added them to this one. Oh, I did. Three waterfall brushes. Okay, so I'm going to look at them. That one's a short waterfall. I need a really long waterfall. So this one looks like a long waterfall. Yep, it is. So I am going to make it about the same length. Okay, come on. It's short cookies weren't working. I'm going to do it about the length of the coffee cup. Kind of like that. That looks alright. It looks like the waterfall was photographed in really bright light though, so it's not reading like a misty day. It's a really strong, strong light. What I might do is to change the blending mode, maybe? Soft light, no, it's way too quiet. Eh, no, that's not working. Opacity down just a little bit. So that looks better. I like that. Uh, one thing that might make the waterfall look more natural in this scene is if we add mist around the bottom of the waterfall. So let's go back to our fog brushes. Again, general practice. Um, add a new layer, if you're not, especially if you're not sure you like it. I'm going to make this brush significantly smaller. Mm. That's not thick enough. I think that might work. I'm going to put it up just slightly. I'm going to actually smash it just a little bit. No! What? Photoshop has this update. Something like that, and then I'm going to mask out the parts that I don't want to show. I'm going to kind of mask it out in kind of a circle around the bottom of the fount, uh, around where the waterfall falls, because that's how it does, how it goes in normal life. very small. But I'm going to make it thicker. I'm actually going to stay on the same layer. I'll risk it. I'm going to go and I'm going to go and get another fog brush. Try this one. See that one looks pretty good. Like how that one's playing out. Oops. Hard edge.
I'm gonna mask it out a little bit more, see if I can make myself like it. Oh. I made a mistake. I was painting on the layer instead of the layer mask. Make sure you clicked on the layer mask. That's very subtle. I'm gonna lower the opacity of my brush to like 50%. So I can kind of erase it, but not really. Okay. Now let's see what it looks like without the waterfall. Eh, I don't think the waterfall really adds much. It's kind of distracting. I just leave it like that. But if you want to make a waterfall, have at it. Okay, so that is how you make the misty forest in a cup. Hope you had fun. Let me know if you need any help.